Hello everyone and welcome to an all new QuintelDesigns.com HD video tutorial. Before we continue today, I want to take a second to apologize for everybody who watches these. I'm a little under the weather today and I'm going to do the best I can, um, but the show must go on. I've got something exciting I want to show you. Today we're going to be making a biohazard virus in Adobe Photoshop. So let's open up Photoshop and get started. Inside Photoshop, we're going to make a document, uh, not really any specific dimensions, we'll just go for pretty big. 2,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. And this can be an RGB document, white background, 72 resolution. We'll call it Biohazard Virus. Now my favorite part about this tutorial, and I'm sure it's going to be yours too, is we're going to make this by scratch. We don't need any stock images. All we need is the power of Photoshop and the effects that it has built in to offer. The first thing we're going to do is make our biohazard e worm virus creature things. Now if you've ever seen Resident Evil or uh, maybe some sort of movie where there's a mass outbreak, that's the kind of look we're going for. And we're going to create that look simply with the paintbrush in Photoshop. Open up Photoshop and pick any brush, any old brush will do. And we're going to create a new layer and call this the virus. This is the layer that our virus worms are going to sit on. Now, here in our brush palette, we're going to keep the diameter at 100 pixels, that's the size. We're going to turn the hardness up to 81% and the spacing we're going to also increase to 30%. Now in our brush shape dynamics we're going to set uh, a few properties here. Now to give you a little background as to what we're doing you can see down here a preview of the brush what we did with spacing is make it a little further apart so it almost got bumpy on us and um, here in the shape dynamics we're going to control something called the fade so this life form this virus has a bit of a tail if you will so the first thing we're gonna do is our size jitter here we're gonna put this to 13 percent and as you can see down here in our preview it kind of makes it a little bit uneven a little more uh, jaggedy maybe kind of gross looking um, and we're going to turn on the control to fade. And you can see here, now we have something that starts large and ends small. Here, we'll keep everything at zero, zero, zero. And our roundness jitter, we'll keep that at zero. And the minimum roundness, now we don't want this to become any less round. Let's keep it circular. We're going to glide this all the way up to 100%. Finally, we're going to go into the scattering section of this brush control, and you can see when you go in there, it already starts to create some interesting effect. We're going to turn the scatter down to 9%. We don't want it jittering around too much. The scatter count will remain at 1, and the count jitter can stay at 0. All of these should be fine. And then we'll collapse this, and for everybody who wants to save this brush, we'll call it the virus, the same as our layer name. Now let's minimize the brush palette and start painting. Remember to be on the new layer here. We don't want to paint on the background. And this is kind of the funnest part. Um, you can, <laughs> That sounded shitty, the funnest part. <laughs> And this part's a lot of fun. You get to kind of decide um, how these creatures are going to curve and bend and kind of be swimming around in this atmosphere. Your only rule is it always starts big and ends small. And you can even adjust the brush to look different, kind of depending on how you imagine the creatures being. Um, we'll kind of get one close to another. I like to do one sort of twisting a little bit. Maybe they're swimming around each other, overlapping. And uh, that's not bad. Maybe we'll do one or two more. We'll 
get one really overlapping. Good, so that gives us a pretty good array of these virus creatures. The next thing we're going to want to do is put on an effect to this layer so it has a little bit more depth. Here, in our effects panel, we'll open it up, and the first thing we're going to create here is an outer glow. Now the outer glow is kind of to separate these things from the background. It's not going to provide a lot of value now, but it will once we start getting into color. We'll make a black outer glow and set it to multiply mode. We don't need a lot in the multiply mode. In fact, we'll go down to 15%. But the size will go all the way to 62 pixels. And you can see it's creating a very light kind of drop shadow around these things, just giving them some rays off the surface. The next thing we're going to do is an inner glow. Now our inner glow is what's going to make these things look 3D, make them uh, pop. Let's make our inner glow white. And then we're going to change and then we're going to change the size up to 57 pixels. 57 again, a number I decided on beforehand, um, almost arbitrary. You obviously can decide what looks best. I also tick off anti-aliased and we're going to crank up the noise to 2%. That gives a little bit of a distressed look in the opacity to 100%. Finally, we're going to come down to this contour palette here. In this part you have to do a little bit by eye, but I'll go a little lower and a little higher. That increases the contrast and gives us some more kind of uneven edge. And we'll hit OK. And now if we zoom in on these virus creatures, we'll get a better look at what's happened. If we look at them, you see their tails are sort of trailing off, becoming pure white. And the, right around the bends, they kind of stay dark. They don't have white tips around there, so it gives them a little bit of depth as to where they're turning and how the light is hitting them. So we'll zoom out. And our next course of action is to make a lot more. There's definitely not this many viruses. There's going to be a ton, right? That's what makes a virus a virus. So we're going to take this layer and we're going to make a duplicate of it. Now you can take the layer and drag it down to the new folder down here or you can go layer, new, and new layer via copy. And that makes a copy of the layer. A control T to free transform this holding down shift and you want to make these guys about one quarter the size of the whole area that you're working with. There they are. We'll hit enter. And Before we continue we're gonna remove the effects from this layer. We're gonna put them back on later but we want to remove them so Photoshop is speedier and we have a better look at as to where these guys are sitting. Now, let's make another new layer via copy and drag that over to the right. Again, and of course if you're looking at the menu you can control J and get the same effect. I'll show that to you. And pull it right on over. You can also hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and drag and that will also create a duplicate of the layer that you have. Now with all of these layers uh, together, let's select them all in the layers palette and collapse them, merge them together with control E. And as you can see, now we have one layer of all of our virus creatures. The first thing we're going to do is put these in the back of the other viruses. So these are kind of swimming in the background while these ones are closer to the camera. We're also going to apply the same effect to these viruses. And we're going to change their opacity down to 22%. 
making them much lighter. Now, we're having trouble seeing them at this point, so we want to kind of reacclimate ourselves and get a better picture of how these are all going to turn out. Let's create a color here, and we'll make it a orangey red. And this can be whatever color you like. And we're going to fill our background layer with it. And now we have a little bit of a better view as to where our viruses sit and what they're doing. We're going to change both the virus copy to lighten mode, and the viruses themselves will also move to lighten mode. And now you see, if you zoom in, the value of that outer glow, the darker outer glow, it's kind of separating this virus, giving it a, a little bit more depth. And finally, if these viruses that are closest to us in the camera are in focus, their counterparts should probably be out of focus um, for the sake of realism. So, we'll filter, blur, and Gaussian blur these background creatures and four pixels will do it here, that's fine. So now things are looking pretty good. Um, it's time to start fleshing out the environment of these creatures. They're gonna live in sort of sickle cell blood, kinda cloudy murky stuff. So we're gonna try that now. With our brighter orange color that we just chose, notice that I didn't put any black into that color, top right. We're going to make our secondary color completely black. And in our background, let's filter, render, clouds. A classic Photoshop filter. And now we have our murky background. The second thing we're going to do is hit D to go back to our default swatches and make a new layer on this layer, we're also going to filter clouds. The first thing we're going to do with this layer is scale it up. Of course, with a control T, and we'll set that to multiply mode. So now we have these cells and the, the background cells, and they're cloudy in front of the cells, cloudy in back of the cells starting to develop some personality. The next thing we're going to do is create some adjustment layers. The first adjustment layer is going to control the color of these. And you'll really start to see these kind of come together now. Let's make a hue and saturation layer and use the following numbers. Before you type in these numbers, make sure colorize is checked off. You'll see that provides a uniform color across the whole image. 23 for our hue, our saturation 61, so pretty saturated and the lightness can stay at zero. And now if you can see we're kind of getting a look here. We see our fire is swimming in the background, swimming in the foreground, and they're all the same uniform color, so maybe we're looking at it through a computer screen or a microscope. The second adjustment layer we're going to do is a curves layer. And if you remember, we'll go back into the effects here for a second. And let's look at that inner glow contour that we made, a little down at the bottom and up at the top. That adds contrast to a certain degree, and we're going to do exactly that with our curves layer. We're going to go down on the bottom and up around the top. And you can see the more up you go, the more lit the viruses become, the more glowing they appear. And the lower you go, the darker their background gets, the, the murkier their environment gets. And we'll settle for something around there. That's good. And, um,. The final steps, we're rounding the bend of being done here. Uh, the final steps are going to be create a, a vignette. Um, this is an optional step. It kind of frames the whole picture and provides a dark border along the whole thing. And then finally, some noise. So we'll start with the noise. Create a new layer. 
and we'll fill it with the background. It's white in this case, or you can hit con or you can hit D, reset your swatches, and then Control Backspace will fill it with white. Filter, noise, add noise. Let's make our amount say 16%. That's fine. Gaussian and monochromatic keeps it black and white. That's what we want. And we'll put that on multiply mode too. Now, in case you haven't guessed this by now, multiply mode makes blacks show and whites invisible, and lighten mode makes whites show and blacks invisible. So we're using that power to layer these effects on. And if you zoom in now, you can kind of see we have some static, we have some uh, dots here. Um, and you can really see it along the tails of our image. And finally, the vignette. We'll also make a new layer. Control backspace and fill that with white. Once that's filled with white, we're going to put some effects on this layer. Um, and remember to name your layers. We'll, we'll call this first one noise. And we'll call this vignette. We'll go to our effects and blending options. And we want an inner glow. This one not white, we want black. And then let's put this in multiply mode. We'll really crank up the size as big as it'll go, 250. And the range all the way as high as it can go, 100. And opacity to 100 as well. So a really soft edge and only seeing it really get dark in the corners. We'll hit OK. We'll right click and we're going to turn this to a smart object. That makes it resizable and usable for us. And of course, put that in multiply mode, hide the white. You can see that makes our corners nice and dark. If you want a comparison, here's one, here's with it, and without it. So it's kind of darkening the sides here an optional effect if you you like it and that is how you make a biohazard virus in Photoshop there's only really one step that's left for fun and uh, you can do it if you want I had to get a kick out of it being a Resident Evil fan I typed out biohazard made it white here made a second one what did I do I'm just of course uh, just recalling it here I did a blur radial blur go ahead there it is and uh, I believe I did an outer glow as well And uh, again, just a fun thing uh, for my own personal enjoyment. So that's how you do it. A biohazard virus in Photoshop from scratch. No stock imagery or art, just the power of the tools before you. Have a good day, everybody. Keep designing.